Sometimes when we hear the words of Jesus, uh, they can be somewhat startling. Something which we've mentioned quite often here is that often the Jesus that has been presented to us when we were in school is a very uh, child-friendly, and Jesus is child-friendly, absolutely, but a very low-fat, low-impact, uh, low-requirement kind of a version of Jesus, where uh, the faith is reduced to just us being nice and us being comfortable and only doing what's comfortable and then that's all good and Jesus would never ask us to do anything that's uncomfortable which of course is completely as the Americans would say baloney uh, because Jesus often asks us to do things that are uncomfortable like today's gospel um, it's it's blunt it's 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 uh, very very clear great crowds accompany Jesus and then he says to them so in front of these great crowds not just to a, a small group but a whole bunch of people if any man comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, he has his own life too. He cannot be my disciple. Anyone who does not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. They are not comfortable words. That's not comfortable. Now, a couple of clarifications here, just so we don't again misunderstand Jesus. That would be a fairly bad thing. Um, if any man comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, etc. Obviously, Jesus is not saying, hate your father hate your mother and hate your brothers and sisters that is obviously that cannot be the case why because there's a commandment saying that we have to love them you know love love your love your honor your father and your mother so there's a commandment directly saying that that we have to love okay so it's, it's obvious that jesus is not saying thou shalt hate <laughs> okay but what he is saying is that god has to be in the first place even if your family don't agree with you that you have to love god Remember, he, any man who comes to me without hating father, anyone who's trying to come to me, but dad says I shouldn't go to mass, so I suppose I won't go to mass. My mom doesn't like that I pray too much, so maybe I should stop praying. My sister was just, you know, annoying me because uh, are you going to Medjugorje again, you big holy Joe? Yeah, so I'm just, go I'm just not going to go this year. You know, I'm going to go to Ibiza instead. You know, so like it, it's this kind of thing where where if 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 someone else if someone even a, even a person close to you even a person in your family doesn't like your faith you practice your faith anyway god in the first place there's a sister in our community from slovakia and uh, not too far from uh, bratislava and uh, she met our community she went to, to a school where some of our sisters teach uh, in nitra and um, yeah she wants to become a sister dad said no mom said keep her dad happy she said okay climbed out the window and uh entered our community <laughs> so no they're happy now like i mean and she didn't break any legs or anything she lived on the they live on the ground floor anyway all good so uh so yeah like the parents are delighted now actually her father's even passed away since uh but um but yeah she became a sister and she's a wonderful sister but she had to kind of make that break mom and dad don't want me to be a sister i know god is calling me to this god's in the first place i go you know, and that kind of radical call, again, it's not, these things aren't comfortable. These things aren't pleasant, but we know they are right. And that's this dilemma, which we're going to have a lot more of now in, in, in the near future, if we don't have it already, that doing the right thing isn't always comfortable. But it's, it's, that doesn't make it any less right, but it's just, it's not easy, it's not comfortable. That's why talking about faith in terms of, you know, if you're comfortable, we'll do this, and if you're comfortable, we'll do that. It's, it's a fallacy, like it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's educating young people to think that faith is comfortable, which it's not. It, it pushes us. But then you think of any good coach, and something I've mentioned a million times here, but any good coach, right, pushes his players, not because he hates them, but because he loves them. Because he wants them to achieve, because he knows they're capable. So if you go beyond what's comfortable, then voila, at the end, you've got a trophy or a medal or whatever it may be. And then you're thanking the coach for breaking your back throughout the year and for making you run 15,000 laps of an ice-covered pitch, trying to wade through water to find the ball or dig through snow for the slitter. I mean, like, you know, you're thanking him then at the end. So in, in, in a similar way, like God, God, he does, he does push us. He's not saying, just stay comfortable, lads, and you'll be grand. He's saying, strive for holiness. Be perfect, as my heavenly Father is perfect. He's not saying, just, just don't kill people. If you even think about it, you've already committed a mortal sin. If, if you, not just if you've committed adultery, that's a bad thing. If you even think about it, if you look at a woman lustfully, he's raising the bar. 
raising the bar, calling us to ever greater heights. So what is it then that, that, that continuously pulls us back? I think what stops us from, from making progress in the spiritual life uh, as regards this kind of thing, you know, as regards uh, what will people say? What will my family say? Or if I follow the Lord, what if that requires suffering? I think what really puts, pulls the brakes on our spiritual growth is fear. Fear. You know, what will people say? Will people think I'm some sort of a holy Joe? We even come across this in, in uh, families uh, as well who maybe are practicing, um, but are scared to death that if their kids go to a retreat, they won't be normal. Okay? So I, I know families like, and their 16, 70 year old little princess of a daughter, um, she wants to go to Medjugorje, wants to go to a retreat or something. The parents are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Then they say, oh, can I go to um, a dance festival? There'll be drugs everywhere. Most people wearing half knotting. Police are called there regularly and you have to wade through vomit on, sure, no problem. It's crazy. I'm going to dance festivals. We know what goes on there. Like, that's no problem. Medjugorje, no, I don't know. It's a lot of rosary beads there. I don't know. I don't know. Bit touch and go, lads. I, I don't get it. Like, but it's this, it's this fear. I, I, I maybe correct, correct, or write in, write an email if, if you think I'm wrong. But I think it's actually fear on the parents' side that the child won't be normal. And if they're not normal, they won't fit in in the world. If they don't fit in the world, they're going to get bullied or left out or whatever it may be. I think it's fear. I fear that they won't, they won't fit in. Fear they won't be normal. And it's also a, a fear which the enemy definitely plants in our minds. And that's that if we follow the Lord, we'll suffer more. If we follow the Lord, we lose out. If we follow the Lord, we end up with less. That's absolutely diabolical. It's just, it's an absolutely diabolical temptation. If you follow the Lord, you end up with less, you know? Like all, the, all those who do whatever they want with their lives and live their freedom, they're the ones who are successful and powerful and happy and have the, the cars and the pools and the, the holidays in Sherman Sheikh in Egypt and all this, all this kind of thing. They, they're the ones with, with success. And all the ones then who, who pray, they're the miserable ones with the little frocks on their heads or the doilies or whatever they're called, mantillas, and, and they're... Um, they're like pegs hairs in the corner, potatoes are rotting in the ground, everyone is dying, it's all horrible. They're the Catholics, they're the, they're the perfect ones. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's this kind of mental idea, you know I mean? That you can't, if, if you follow the Lord, everything is going to be miserable. And if you live your freedom as you want, kind of grab your life by the horns and realize your business and all this, your maximum potential, all this kind of thing, you will be successful and powerful and wealthy. Absolute stupid fallacy that. It's just a complete lie. Right? That our faith makes us less happy or less, <coughs> less successful even. I mean, we think of how Western society has been built up on Christian principles. You know, Europe, the state, they're built on Christian principles. You know, that, that every person is equal. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been plenty of people who got it wrong along the way as well. But fundamentally, the principles are good. You know, that every man should be allowed to study, travel, marry who they wish. Uh, be given a chance to start their own business. I mean, these, these are good ideas, good principles. So they have freedom, but that freedom also comes with responsibility. Therefore, you also have a prison system, judicial system, and so on. Let's not get lost off topic. Okay, so fear. Fear is what stops us, I think, from one of the reasons, but I think, it's, I think it's quite a common one. Fear is what stops us from following the Lord. Lord, if I follow you, Jenny, you might give me cancer or something, because all the saints had... They all died of TB or something. So if I follow you, Lord, I might, I might end up with less. If I follow you, Lord, my, my family mightn't, mightn't like it. They mightn't agree. So I might end up with less. If I follow you, Lord, you know, I won't be able to kind of do all these kind of dodgy maneuvers in my business and pay less tax and pay my employees less. So I'll end up poorer. If I follow you, Lord, I'm just not going to have as much fun. Because those who break your laws, they have way more fun. And we forget all the... the the truth that when we follow the Lord, then we've no regrets. When we follow the Lord, then we've no shame. When we follow the Lord, then we have happier families, united families. When we follow the Lord, we begin to we become virtuous people, which will make us obviously 
maybe, 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 maybe not quite as successful in business, but honest. Honest. And our employees will see that. It works. Following the Lord works. We don't end up with less. And even if we did end up with slightly less, economically speaking, we gain eternal life. Heaven for all eternity. So even if there is a cross to be carried for following the Lord now, it is temporary. It will pass. The glory of heaven will never fade, will never even diminish slightly. What we get for all eternity is its just its simply impossible to put it into words. We not only are in God's presence, we share in God's divine life. We share in God's divine power. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know how that looks or works because it's just it's so beyond the world that we have today. But scripture teaches us that, we, that God wishes to divinize us, make us like him. So if I can be trusted with the little amount of time, the little amount of intelligence, the little amount of little ability that I have now, if I can be trusted with that, if I can be trusted with those limited abilities to do the best I can and become a saint here and make life uh, as good as possible for those around me, then I can be trusted with far more for all eternity in heaven. So we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. As so many uh, of the incredible martyrs have proven to us throughout the centuries, that even against an empire or some crazy king or some oppression from, from a communist source or who knows who, uh, they pushed on through. They held on to their love for the Lord. Maybe they shed their blood. They gained a crown of martyrdom and they get to see the Lord and live with him and share his power for all eternity. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord.